This is going to be Genesis 22. And I believe this is one of the greatest chapters in the entire Bible. Because it really shows you the picture of the Lord Jesus Christ dying on the cross for our sins. How the Father sacrificed His Son to be the payment for our sin. That's what this chapter really illustrates. Genesis 22.1 And it came to pass after these think after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. So it came to pass. It says, And it came to pass after these things. After what things? Well, in the last chapter, he had just made a covenant with Abimelech, and he ta it talks about how he planted a grove in Beersheba, and there he called on the name of the Lord. And now the Lord is going to tempt Abraham. And immediately the Bible critic will run to James 1.13, which says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. So the Bible hater will say, well, that's a contradiction. They will say, if God tempted Abraham, then that contradicts John 1.13, because it says, For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But it, it's not a contradiction. It says, God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. The context is being tempted with evil. And when the Bible speaks of temptation, it doesn't necessarily mean tempted to sin every time. For example, in James 1-2, it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Should I be happy going into a situation where the devil is tempting me to sin? I don't think so. I need to run from that situation. So the Lord is not tempting Abraham to commit sin. The Lord also knows that he will not let Abraham go through with slaying his son. See, God sees the end from the beginning. He knows what the plan is. He knows what's going to happen before it happens. Genesis 22, 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. So Abraham says, Behold, here I am. And this reminds me of Isaiah. Because in Isaiah 6, 8, it says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here, I, here am I, send me. He, Isaiah said, Here am I, send me. Abraham said, Here I am. When the Lord is wanting you for something, you should say, Here am I. You should say, Here I am. You should say, Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. Like Samuel did in 1 Samuel 3.10. Just be ready with an open ear when you read the words of God. Abraham was ready. He said, Behold, here I am. Genesis 22.2 And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. So you're going to see that this chapter is one of the greatest Old Testament pictures of the Father sacrificing the Son on the cross to pay for our sins. Abraham will be a type of God the Father. Isaac will be a type of the Son. And notice the first thing the Lord says, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac. Isaac wasn't Abraham's only son, but he was the only son that mattered because he was the child of promise. Now me and you are sons of God. So Jesus Christ isn't the only son, but he's the only begotten son, as it says in John 3, 16. So the Lord says, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest. Abraham is a type of the father, and Isaac is a type of the son. What does the father say about the son in Matthew 3? In Matthew 3, 17, it says, And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So Abraham was going to take his son, his only son Isaac, whom he loved. Jesus Christ, the only begotten son, it calls him the beloved son in Matthew three seventeen, Genesis 22, 2 and 3. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, 
and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him. Notice that. He took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place of which God had told him. Once again, you see Abraham rising up early in the morning. This seems to be a key in getting things done. It says he took two of his young men with him. Once again, this matches the crucifixion. Because when Jesus Christ was crucified, you know what? He had a thief on each side. He had two men with him. In Luke twenty-two thirty-two, it says, And there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. Genesis 22, 3, And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went into the place of which God had told him. So it says he clave the wood for a burnt offering. You see, the ass carries the wood first. He saddled the ass. And this is like how, uh, this is like how they had Simon the Cyrene carry the cross before Jesus Christ. He carried the wood first. In Matthew twenty seven thirty two it says, And as they came out they found a man they found a man of Cyrene, Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. Jesus also carried the cross. In John nineteen, sixteen through seventeen it says, Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified, and they took Jesus and led him away, and he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha. So Jesus carried the cross, but before him you had Simon carrying it. Just like before Isaac touches the wood, Abraham puts it on the ass. Genesis 22, 4. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. You see that significant third day. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes. Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And you will find at the end of this story that Isaac, who was supposed to be dead on the third day, actually comes out alive on the third day. Jesus Christ was supposed to remain dead, but on the third day, he was alive. To many people's surprise, he was no longer in the grave, and he's still alive today. It says in Revelation 1.18, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. Genesis 22.4, Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Abraham saw the place afar off. He saw a lot of things afar off. In Hebrews eleven thirteen, it says, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were, were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. So I don't believe Abraham was looking forward to the cross, but I do believe he was looking forward to a kingdom. In Hebrews eleven nine through 10, it says, By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles, with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. He looked for a city. Uh, I believe the old, these Old Testament guys were looking for the Messiah to show up with a gold crown and not a crown of thorns. Genesis 22, 5. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Remember, the two young men can represent the two dying thieves on the cross next to Jesus on their crosses. And the ass can represent Simon that carried the cross for a bit. And here, Abraham tells them to stay back. He tells those young men to stay back. Uh, this uh, matter doesn't have anything to do with the ass. It doesn't have anything to do with those two young men. This is all about the father and the son. Jesus Christ may have had two men crucified on the same day right next to him. He may have had a man carry his cross. However, none of those men took part in our payment for sin. This was all about the father and the son. Genesis 22, 5, And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass. He tells them to stay back. 
And he says, I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. He says, I and the lad will go yonder and worship. So he was going to go sacrifice to the Lord. So when you sacrifice something for the Lord, then that is worship. Hebrews 13, 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise of to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. Uh, Romans 12, 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So you can say something with your lips to praise God. That's a sacrifice. You can uh, present your bodies a living sacrifice every day. Instead of doing what you want to do, you do what God wants you to do. So it's a sacrifice. Now look at a very significant thing that Abraham says here in Genesis 22, 5. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship. Now look at this. And come again to you. He says, and come again to you. Abraham believed that he and Isaac would both return. He believed he was going to sacrifice his son. But he also believed that Isaac was the child of promise. He believed that God was going to bring a nation from that son Isaac and so Abraham believed he was going to offer Isaac and then the Lord was going to resurrect him because how could a nation come from Isaac if the Lord wasn't going to resurrect him so Abraham saw the resurrection of a dead son I don't believe he saw the death burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ but he believed that God was going to resurrect his son and Isaac just happens to be a type of the Lord Jesus Christ Genesis 22, 6. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and the knife, and they both of them, and they went both of them together. Now Abraham takes the wood and puts it on Isaac. And this picture is how the Lord carried the wood that he would be sacrificed on. You see, uh, as we read before, the Lord Jesus Christ carried the cross. He carried the wood that he'd be sacrificed on, just like Isaac carries the wood that it was going to be used in his sacrifice. In Genesis 22, 7, And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Isaac is like, Dad, I see the fire. I see the wood, but where's the lamb? And this picture is how the Son of God asked the father a question, when he was on the cross. Remember, Jesus asked, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So they both ask a question to the Father. Genesis 22, 8, And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. This is a great verse showing you the deity of Jesus Christ. Abraham said, God will provide himself a lamb. And that's what he did. He provides himself as the Lamb. In 1 Timothy 3.16, it says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. God was manifest in the flesh. God came down in the flesh and provided himself a Lamb. John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. God provided himself a Lamb. He became the Lamb. God became the Lamb and died for our sins on the cross. Genesis 22, 9. And they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Abraham bound Isaac his son, the father had to bind his own son. Just like God the father had to let his son die to save souls from sin, Abraham was going to sacrifice his own son. In Isaiah 53, 10, it says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. When Jesus Christ was on the cross, all the sin of mankind was placed on Jesus Christ. Second Corinthians 5, 21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him so Jesus Christ took our hell he took the beating for us he became sin for us it pleased the Lord to bruise him 
It pleased the Lord to bruise him because God poured out his wrath on the Son in your place. God's wrath on sin had to be satisfied. So it pleased the Lord to bruise him because that's how he got his wrath satisfied. Jesus became our propitiation. He was our substitute that became... The, he, be, he appeased the wrath of God on sin in our place. Genesis 22.10 And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. When Jesus Christ was on the cross, the Father stretched forth his hand. He grabbed the cup of his wrath and poured it out on the Son, Jesus Christ. Abraham took the knife and held it up in the air above Isaac, and he was ready to slay his son. And notice that Jesus Christ also was pierced in the side. He also had a knife involved in the sacrifice. In John 19, 34, but one of the soldiers with a spear, or not with a knife, but with a spear, pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. So Isaac was about to be pierced with a knife. Jesus Christ got pierced with a spear. Now, a pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus Christ is going to show up in Genesis 22. A pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus Christ as the angel of the Lord. You can't escape Jesus Christ. No matter where you go in the book, we've already been seeing a type of Jesus Christ through Isaac. Now we're going to see Jesus Christ himself show up as the angel of the Lord. Genesis 22, 11. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. Once again, Abraham says, Here am I. Just like he said before, Here I am. Just like Isaiah said, Here am I, send me. Abraham always had his ears open toward heaven. Just like Jesus is always saying, If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Abraham was ready to give an open ear. Genesis twenty two twelve, And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And now we have a turn of events. Isaac is going to go from being a picture of Jesus Christ to being a picture of me and you. Because the Lord says, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything to him. You see, when we got saved, the wrath of God was taken off of us. Now, God isn't going to lay a hand of wrath on us. We are passed from death unto life. Isaac was about to die. Now he's going to live. The wages of sin is death. But our sins are gone. Instead of facing the second death, we're going to live. Our sins are washed in the blood. Instead of the Lord stretching forth His hand and slaying us, we are now a part of His hand, and no man can pluck us out. The Lord said, Now I know that thou fearest God. The Lord really already knew what Abraham would do before he did it. But he, he says, Now I know that thou fearest God. He talks like this to the saints to, to prove them, to get down on their level. For example, in John 6, 5, and 6, it says, When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And notice, in this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. You see, the Lord knows what he's going to do. The Lord knows what you're going to say. The Lord knows, you know, his plan. He knows the end from the beginning. But just like... Sometimes we'll get down our, on our kids' level and talk to them like we don't know what they're thinking or what they're going to say or what they did. God gets down on our level, and he says, No, I know that thou fearest God. He already knew that. He just he really wanted Abraham to go through this, this temptation here. Now, Isaac, as I said, becomes a picture of me and you. The Lord becomes the sacrifice in our place, just like the ram becomes the sacrifice in the place of Isaac here in Genesis 22. Genesis 22:13. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. So the ram is caught in a thicket by his horns. That is significant. The ram has a thicket on his head. Do you know what Jesus Christ had on his head? In John 19, 5, Then came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns. So the ram was caught in the thicket by his horns. Horns in the Bible are a symbol of power, a symbol of kings. So they had the crown of thorns 
on the king of kings. This ram was caught in a thicket by his horns. You see the picture there? You see the similarity? Now he offered the ram in the stead of his son. And Abraham takes the ram and offers him in place of his son. So Isaac becomes a picture of me and you and not a picture of Jesus. And the ram becomes a picture of Jesus taking our place. Just like the ram took Isaac's place. The ram died instead of Isaac. Uh, Jesus has already taken your place on the cross. You just have to accept the payment. It says in Genesis 22:14, Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day, in the mouth of the Lord it shall be seen. And it says in Genesis 22:15 through 17, The angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. And said, By myself I have sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. God had already given him this promise. Many times you read the Bible, and God will continuously remind you of his promises to you as a child of God. And that is why there is more than one verse in the Bible that shows you salvation by grace. There's more than one verse that shows you eternal security and so on and so forth. God keeps reminding Abraham about this promise. God's promise is that he's going to multiply his seed as the stars of heaven. And I don't believe this is completely fulfilled. Uh, not, not even close yet. Because in eternity, the Lord's government won't have an end. And the seed of Abraham will continue to grow on out into eternity. Genesis 22:18 And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. You see Abraham is the friend of God. So God is like any friend of Abraham is a friend of mine. Is a friend of mine. He says and in in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. Verse 19, So Abraham returned to his young men, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. And now we're going to have come to a great list of baby names for you that are expecting, uh, kind of. Genesis 22, 20 through 21, And it came to pass after these things that it was told Abraham, saying, Behold, Milcah, she hath also borne children unto thy brother Nahor. Huz his firstborn, and Buzz his brother, and Camuel the father of Aram. So there's just some good names, Huz and Buzz. I bet they were some good old boys, Huz and Buzz. And Chezid, and Ho Hazo, and Pildash, and Jidlaf, and Bethuel. And Bethuel begat Rebekah. These eight Milcah did bear to Nahor, Abraham's brother. One preacher messed up and said Milcah, Milcah bear. And the people thought he was talking about milk and a bear. But it says, these eight milk I did bear. Uh, there's you some good baby names there. And his concubine, whose name was Remu Reuma, she also bare Teba and Gaham and Thahash and Mekah. And notice this list is very important because it mentions Rebekah. This is Isaac's future wife, and she is a picture of the church, the bride of Christ.